community. So we're talking about this and w that we have to submit to one another. And in order to do that, th there, it, it involves love. And so love is what the New Testament law of love is our new commandment. I don't have to go back to the Ten Commandments, although that one commandment fulfills all the law, right? So it's going to fulfill all the Ten Commandments. When you walk in love, you're fulfilling that. But so the, the law of love is extremely imperative in, in a church, in a family, in your family, right? With your, you can't come to church and, and act one way and then go back to your house all week, Monday through Saturday, and act another way. And expect for anything to work for you. Right. Yeah. Everybody say zero. 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 Show me zero. zero. All right, you guys are interact. It's an inter interactive service tonight. Okay, <laughs> nothing, yeah. right? Because our faith works by love. Love, love right? Yeah. Faith works by love, and, and so we're going to get some places tonight. But um, we we started off with this last time, and I will say this again, and we say it often that Brother Hagen said in the last days that God was building strong local churches. Amen. Praise God. Yep, and he's bring, building strong local churches, and he's building a place, or place says, which you are a part of one, um, where we get to learn how to love people even though we might not like them. <laughs> and then we also get to yield our wills in our, in our lives to some things that we might not like. Yeah. And that's to our master, our savior, right. right? Because when we read his word, there are things in there that I don't particularly just do backflips about, yeah. you know? And some people, they pick and choose in the Bible what they want and what they don't want. And they only read the things that they want. But everybody say this, I love everything in the Bible. I love this whole law. I love, I love your word. I love it. I, I, I meditate on it day and night, is what he said. So we talked about those things. And I'm, I'm going to start with this tonight um, because I left off, and I had been talking about this last time. I said this, the gospel, and I love this because this, this I, didn't make, I didn't make this up, but I went back and wrote it down. It says, the gospel of Jesus Christ is demonstrated through two avenues in the earth. In other words, the way people know that we're born again and, and it's, a, it's a billboard for us is what? What two ways, what two avenue, avenues um, do, we, do we do this by? Well, unity is one or love because in unity is love. It's the gathering together. And then the miraculous. Do you remember me saying that? Those are two avenues by which people know that we're born again. They're, they're like, oh, those people, those people, they're different. They must be Christians. Because they're all getting along, and out there they don't all get along. Yeah? yeah? Right. Right? right? You go anywhere, and where it's a place of strife. Maybe your work is like that. Maybe your home is like that. But outside of the four walls of the church, and that's why we, we don't, uh, you know, allow strife in here. And I forgot my phone, but I, I had on, on, on there today... I was going back and I was looking. We have it in the office and it's written down. The Holy Ghost at the beginning of the year said three things to our church. Three. Does anybody remember what they are? I'll give you a big hand clap if you remember because <laughs> I don't have any money. I'll give you a big hand clap if you can figure out what it was. Did anybody write it down or even know? We talked about it for months and months. What did he say? Hmm? Yeah, that was number one. Huh? Ah, that was a good one. Yeah, number two. So the first one was run together at a steady pace. What is that? Unity. Run together at a steady pace. How do we do that? Well, we, keep, we, we're, we listen to the word of God. We hear what's being preached because we believe that that's our answer and our help. And we all run together with that same vision, that same purpose, running together at a steady pace. Woo, Jesus. Number two, don't tolerate strife. Don't tolerate it. Because what did I just say? Outside of the four walls of the church, that's what they do. That's what their mantra is. We, we separate, divide, and conquer. Get everybody into groups. Here's all the Hispanic people over here. Here's all the African-American people over here. 
here's all the white people here, here's all the, the Asian people over there, here's all the mixed people over there, what, come on, before you know, here's the blue people, the blue, blue people, raise your hand, hey. go over there on that side, right, that's not unity, so outside the four walls of the church, that's what they say, that's their mantra, that's on their shirts, it's in the schools, it's in the colleges, divide, separate, hate, but God's word and God's kingdom is love. Yes. It's unity. Yes. Love and unity right. together. Every race, every creed, Good. every people. Amen. Right. All one. Right. And we're going to read 1 Corinthians again tonight. Run together at a steady pace. Don't tolerate strife. And I love this one. He said, no small thinking. Right. And so... Part of that is what we do every service. And I know you guys are probably like, if they do that slide one more time, billing's paid off. <laughs> I'm going to just, I'm just going to. No, you're going to get okay because no small thinking, right? Maybe you can't understand why, why we're going that direction, but that's what the way the Holy Ghost has directed us. So we're all going to go one way, one way. We, that, that build, this building is going to be paid. It is paid off yeah. by faith. I see it. Yeah. I know it. Right? Why? Well, there's a plan. Yeah. There's a purpose for it. Yeah. And guess what? You're a part of that. Yeah. So I wanted to read those things so you could know. Now I want to turn over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. You guys with me? Yes. I'm kind of like, it's like shotgun night where I just kind of like have a, a whole bunch of stuff. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, verse 12. My glasses. Here we go. It says, and we read this last time, but I'm going to read it again. It says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. We just read two sentences and they've said one three times. Okay. Okay. But all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Whether we're Jews or Greeks, whether we're slaves or free, and have all been made to drink of how many? Sp one spirit. We've all been. So if you might not understand this scripture, all it's saying is all the body of Christ, we're all one. We're all different kinds of people, but we're all one together. Back then it was Jews and Greeks, and remember they weren't supposed to talk to, the, you know, the Samaritans weren't supposed to talk to the Jewish people, and all this stuff. They, were, they, they had all these different things going on. So nothing's new under the sun. And then, it goes, and then it goes on to say, if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not the eye, am I not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I love your mascara, and your lashes are so awesome. <laughs> the whole body was an eye? I mean, come on, y'all. Right? He has an imagination. If the whole body were an eye, uh, where would be the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing or an ear? Hi, everybody. You're in a big ear. Where would be the smelling? So it goes on and on. And it says, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? Now... Indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And then it goes on to say, you can't say if you're the I, you know, you're not important. Listen, we're all important in the body of Christ. Amen. I've heard everybody always uses the pinky toe. I don't know why. But they always say, even if you're the pinky toe, you know, you, you, you're important. But the music people on the stage are not more important than the greeters at the door. They're not. They're not more important than the greeters at the door. Nor will I, I will say this. I think children's workers, children's ministry people are going to get some special crowns in heaven. And I'm not talking about the kind you draw with either. I'm talking about crowns on your head. I'm like talking about bling. They're going to be blinged out. They're going to be walking down there and you're going to, they were in children's ministry. <laughs> they were all in children's ministry and they're like, and they're walking down the thing. Yeah because of what they've done. But he's saying that all members are just as important as the other. Yes. Unity. 
respect for one another, honoring one another, honoring the gift in one another, being able to see somebody not after the flesh but after the spirit. When's the last time we talked to somebody at church and not on a natural level? I'm just letting that sink in for a minute. Well, girl, you know, I just, you know, that. And we're all talking about natural things, but yet we see each other twice a week sometimes. <laughs> and then when we do, it's all natural, natural. No, it says the body, we're iron sharpening iron. Right? So if somebody, if, if we're not, if this isn't our family, we're just acting like we're family or only two people are our family. But those peeps over there, they're not our family. They ain't our family. Because we don't talk to those people. That's not how God rolls. He said, no, no, all one body, all one member of the same body. You can't say to the pinky, I don't like you. Oh, I don't like, I don't, I don't like them. No, we don't bring what's outside into the inside. We don't bring the past into the now. We're together, going forward, unity, running our race together. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And every devil might not like this, but that's okay. Right. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, members of one body. So, the gospel of Jesus Christ is demonstrated through two avenues, unity and the miraculous. So, when we walk in love and we have the miraculous working in our life, these two things are stamps on us of approval that we are sons of the living God. We are daughters of the King. Yeah. Yeah. That we belong to something greater and bigger than us. Amen. Well, I just believe a t I was a tadpole, and I just came up, and I was a tadpole, and something just spit me out, and I just existed. That's what they're teaching in school now. Right. Right. Come on. Yeah. Or a monkey. And now I'm, and I grew a tail, and come on. Mm -hmm. No, you're part of something great. Yeah. You're part of something that God ordained, that God breathed into life. That God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be male. I mean, come on, he created. He created you. He created each of us. Different, but yet one. Unity. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, I did highlight, and I went backwards, didn't I? So we'll, we'll get to where we're going. How about this one? 1 John 1, 7. And actually, before we go there, let's go to Galatians 5, 20. Galatians 5, 20. So we're talking about unity and all of us fitting in the body as he wants and he designed. Not popular, but it needs to be preached about and taught about. Amen. Amen. Ephesians, Galatians. And let's look at that... Um, uh, yeah, we look at it in the New King James. Galatians 5, is that Galatians 5.20? All right, um, start with a 19, if you don't mind. I don't think I wrote down the right verse. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, well, we're going to go over to 1 John 1.7. 1 John 1.7. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that the young people are in here tonight. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does that include even us who are older? Am I a young person? <laughs> First, uh, what I say? First John 1, 7. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, listen to this. We have what? Fellowship, fellowship with who? One but how do we have that fellowship? When we what? When we wa walk in the light. So we can say basically walking in the light of God's word, what he says, when I do that, I have fellowship with one another. If you're not get, this is a good indicator. If you're not getting along with God's people, you're probably not in the word very much. Because it says if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So it's important, that's unity right there, by walking in the light, by getting and staying close to him and his word and what he has to say. I don't get to pick and choose what I like and what other people say and what my daddy told me, what my mama, my auntie, my uncle, what they all believe. No, 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 I believe what God's word says. That's the most important thing to me. Amen. And because I walk in that light, 
I'm not deceived in my thinking. And then I'm going to have fellowship with one another. Why? Because fellowship is true unity, right? Because when you get around people, then you're going to have that unity factor there because you're walking in the light of God's word. What does he say about people? Love them. Honor them. If you mess up, ask for forgiveness. If they mess up, they ask for, come on. That's the way we roll. That's the way we work together. Hopefully that was, and if that wasn't a natural thing in your, in your family, in your, in your natural family, over in God's family, that's how, it, that's how it works. Amen. Amen. So if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. All right. Now I'm going to get to some of these points. Praise God. So we're talking about uh, walking in unity. And we're talking about these things, but I put down here, number one, that in, in walking in these things, we have to be able to receive correction well. <laughs> you can tell I didn't want to say it. All right. I, I have to, I have to uh, be able to receive correction well. And this is what, this is, what is so pertinent in, in, in society today and in churches. It says, we love what God loves, and one of the major jobs the word does in our lives is it corrects us. That's one of the the major, it's not so we can feel good. Well, I like to read Psalms because I just love when he says, you are my hiding place. That's wonderful. But the rest of the word is to correct us and help us and and knock the rough edges off of us, right? And so his word is, is a grinder on us a little bit. You know what I mean by that? It just gets those rough edges off of us. It, it takes all the yuck on our life and it just knocks it right off, right? So in walking in unity, I have to, I have to learn to receive correction well. Let's, let's look at this. 2 Timothy 3.16 in the message, and you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it. It says, every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another for showing us the truth. In exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, and training us to live God's way. Oh, I love the way that reads. That's what the Word of God does. That's a New King James, but this is the message. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, every part of God's scripture or the scripture of God is God-breathed and useful one way or another for showing us truth. But you know, Pastor Kendall, I I have my truth, and this is my truth. I believe, who cares what you believe? I don't mean that ugly, but it doesn't really matter what we believe. It doesn't doesn't really matter what we believe. You could say, I don't believe that's a chair, but that's a chair, and it has four legs. And if you take one off, you're going to fall down and go boom. But you can say all day, that's not a chair. You can have your own truth. You're welcome to your own truth. But what I'm saying is when it comes to the things of God, we have to say God's word is the truth, period. Drop the mic. Drop it. It doesn't matter what I think. I put his word first. You guys, because I, I used to think like that. Thank God for the renewing of your mind. I remember I used to think like that when I was in college. I thought I was a brat. Miss Margaret, is that true? Yeah, it's a brat. Yeah. Oh, man. And I would argue with you. And I would think, I think I was so right and I was so wrong. Why? Because I was, I, I had, there was darkness. I was walking in the way I wanted to walk. I was doing what I wanted to do. But when that light came on, that's why I like that song, See the Light. When the light comes on, man, and his light, the light of his word shines on your heart. You're like, wait a minute. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know what I think I know. I'm so glad for your word, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. The light came on. Now I see. Now I know. You are love. You live on the inside of me. Greater is he that's in me. Then I can say that than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So every part of scripture, it shows us truth. Exposing our rebellion. You know, Pastor Ken, I'm not rebellious. Oh, you aren't. Mm. Mm. let's put a ring thing on your in your room you know one of the rings you know we have on the front you come on you know and put a put a little app on our phone and let's watch Mm. how rebellious are we see we don't need to do that because god sees our heart he knows i don't need to know he knows right 
He sees, but it shows it. It exposes our rebellion. It exposes our pride. When we think we know it all and we got it going on and we all that. And we read the word of God. That's why some people don't even know where their Bibles are because they don't want to know all that. <laughs> they do not want that exposed. Where's your Bible? I don't know. I just really don't know. <clears throat> it corrects our mistakes and it trains us to live God's way. Why do you think the world is in the, in, in the mess it's in? A lot of people don't know God's word. There's a whole generation that doesn't even want to know. I mean, remember at the, at the Helps Bank, when I read that to you guys, I think it was, what, 74% of the Gen Z don't even believe that God exists, that God is even real. That there's anybody up there. Hello, is anybody up there? Knock, knock. Do you hear me? Yeah, he hears you. Yeah. He knows you. He created you. He knows your future. He knows the path for your life. And you're not a mistake. And he, he made you for this time and this, and this hour. And it wasn't just so you could be depressed and sit in your room. He made you so you would be a mouthpiece for him to your generation. <laughs> Praise God. So that's what the scripture does for us. So we need to learn to receive correction well. Say, Lord, you know, I take this, I read this, and I want to change. And I, and I value what your word says, and I'm going to be a doer of your word. What is that over there in James? It says, don't go and look at, into the perfect law of liberty and walk away and not, and not remember what you just read. That's like coming to church tonight, and you're like, Pastor Kendall, she was fired tonight. Fire! And then you wake up tomorrow morning, you have no idea what we preach. No idea. You don't even know where your Bible is. Your dog ate it, and you did not even know it. <laughs> that one might be impossible, but I don't know. The aftermath of that. <laughs> it's like one time we came home after church years ago. Remember that? Side story journey. And we came home, pushed the garage door open, her garage went up, and there was all these, like, stuff on the ground from our dog who had gotten to Hershey's Kisses, but they were Easter ones. So there was like blue foil, <laughs> pink flo foil, whatever, all these colorful ones, and had like bleh and bleh. Yeah. And, you, and dogs aren't supposed to have chocolate. She lived. She did fine. I think she, she did okay. But anyway, yeah. So I don't even know what that was about. But anyway, so I received correction well. You were born for a purpose. We have to take his word seriously. We have to know it's the, it's the, it's, and this is the reason I brought this. this is, that was God. I, I brought this because um, I pulled this out today, and I was just so thankful for God's word. This Bible was mine when I was five years old, and my grandmother gave it to me. And so if you open up the cover, it says, To Kendall Williford from Mimi in 1975. And don't tell me I'm old. Okay, and so if you do the math, that would be what, 48 years? Is that correct? 48 years old? Going on 49? I'm not having a birthday this year. So anyway, but this Bible uh, is taped together. I'm going to get it. I want to get it professionally done because it's just so precious. But it, um, it has all these highlight things and, and a little pencil marks from when I was in elementary school and I would carry it and I would underline things. Back when I was five, six, seven years old, I'm older now. And I went away from it for a while, but I came back. Yeah. Train up a child in the way that they should go, yeah. and when they're old, they won't depart from it. Yeah. That, right there. Because I had, a, I, had, I had a foundation in that. Now, I'm not saying, you know, we're not all perfect, and we don't do things all right. We might have been parents that were messed up whatever, but I'm telling you, you bringing them to church, the foundation, they're not going to forget when they're in hard times. You know why? Because one time when I was in college and I was laying on the floor of my apartment and I was OD'd almost on stuff that I had taken, which I didn't know what I had taken, I remember crying out to God. And that was my lowest point in my life. And I don't have time to get into all that. But I had done something that I shouldn't have done, and I was, I was in dire straits. And I remember crying out to God. I said, you know, I had defied him, said all these things. And I said, at that point, I said, God, 
I, I'm, I'm going to die. I need your help. And from that point, my life turned around and started changing. But see, we have to come to a point where this matters to us. My Facebook, my Twitter, <laughs> my accounts, all the things that we think are so precious, they, they will vanish away. They will, they will vanish away and they won't matter. When you take your last breath, it will not matter who saw your, your Snapchat. It does not matter. But you know what matters? What I did on earth. How many lives I affected. How many people that I was able to encourage and help. How many people you could pray for. Watch their lives turn around. That's what this right here does. It helps instruct us. It helps keep us, amen, on the right path. Wow, that was better than I thought it was going to be. Praise God. So 2 Timothy 3.16 is important. Number two, and where are we on time? Wow. I'll just do this last, this last one tonight. Um, uh, number two, we have to understand that we're participants. When it comes to unity, that we are a participant in, in the services. We're a participant together, that we're not just attendees. That we're, uh, I participate in, in, in the church. I participate in people's lives. I'm not just come in late, leave early, bam, I'm out of here. I'm a participant. I pray for others. I care about what their life looks like. I care about if they backslide, if they go away from God. I care about that. That bothers me. That ought to bother us, y'all. That ought to bother us when somebody stops serving God. That ought to bother us. It's important. Every person is important. Every child, every you, everybody's important. It's not just, oh, well, yeah, they're, they're on the praise team, so they're important. No, no, no. Everybody's important. So 1 Corinthians 6 and verse uh, 19 and 20. Can you pull that up in the Amplify for me, Shelley, please? And I just want to read uh, 19 and 20. Man, it's quiet in here, but God's saying some stuff. Amen. He's saying some stuff here tonight. Do you realize how important you are together? That as, if we're together as one body, if we really realize these things and we really get this on the inside of us, the enemy cannot stop us. He cannot stop us. Let's read this. 1 Corinthians, uh, what did I say, 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary. Everybody say the very sanctuary. The very sanctuary. Of the Holy Spirit. I remember reading this when I was in college. When I, I mean, people would send me stuff all the time, you know, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Rah. And I remember hearing this. Do you not know that your body is the temple? It's a sanctuary. It's a house of the Holy Spirit. So every time I did something bad, I, I still had that in me. I knew. I was making the decisive decision to still do things even though I knew they were wrong. It was my choice. <laughs> so do you not know that your, your body is the very sanctuary, the house of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a what? He gave that to us as a gift, y'all. It's a gift. I love getting gifts. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. And I love giving gifts. I am a gift giver. I love giving gifts. But I know somebody who's more of a gift giver than I am. We won't talk about it. Right? But, but if that's your love language, if that's how you roll. But the biggest gifter in all of creation, in all of time, is him, Jesus. He gave himself as a sacrifice. And it was a gift. It says, whom you have received as a gift from God. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. And you were purchased with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. So because of that, what does he say? Then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. Mm. So it matters what I do with my body. Amen. It matters what I do in the body. Amen. Amen. I'm not just an attendee. That's right. I'm a participator. Right. Amen. I've been bought with a price. I've been purchased with a preciousness and paid for. I've been made his own. 
then I, it's my responsibility to honor him. How do I honor him? Remember I said in the beginning, James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's how you get your, the power to work in your life, right? And bring him glory in your body. Well, what does that mean? Don't do stuff with your body that's no, no. Bring glory to him in your body. Do we have to go into detail? We don't. We don't want that for YouTube. No, 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 it's on YouTube. And bring glory to him in your body. In other words, my body does not belong to me anymore. I've been bought with a price. I belong to him. And so whatever, ever I, you know, these thoughts or these things that come to me and say, do this, cut. I'm going to start cutting. No, I don't do that because I've been paid for with the precious blood of Jesus. He loves me. He paid for me. I don't have to cut myself. I don't have to drink my life away. I don't have to drug myself up. I don't have to give my body to somebody else and let them do whatever they want with me. Because my body doesn't belong to me. It belongs to him. Woo, we're going to preach it tonight. We're going to preach it tonight. So bring glory to him in your body. How do we do that? What I just said. <laughs> so in spirit and in our bodies. Where is, I wrote it down in here. Or maybe I wrote it in my notes. It doesn't matter. But there was a different way to read it. So in my spirit and in my body, I want to honor him. I want to respect him because it matters to the rest of the body. So we'll end here tonight. Maybe we will go another time. <laughs> but we'll end here tonight that I want, you know, in, in, the, in the unity factor of things, and when we talk about these things, in other words, we can't say to ourselves, well, you know, that's just me. I'm just going to do what I want. You know what? Would you, when you do what you want, it affects the whole body. Right. When you do what you want, yeah. it affects this church because yes. you matter. When you're not here, it matters because it helps in the whole flow of everything. So it's not just like, yeah, I just go when I want. No, no. It, 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 forsake, um, not the assembling together of yourselves. Where is that? Right here. Not in the Amplified, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers as is the habit of some. Hello, some? How about many? <laughs> How about 99% of people? <laughs> can I add that, Mr. Can I add that in there? All right. As a habit of some, but admonishing. Listen to this. Warning, urging, and encouraging one another. Well, you just do what you want, man. It's your life. What church do you go to? Yeah, it does matter. I'm going to urge you to come. I'm going to urge you to get okay. I'm going to urge you to pray. I'm going to urge you to read your Bible because that's what we do because that's how iron sharpens iron. Right. Amen. It's not whatever you want to do. Right. Well, you know, because I just, you know, it's my body. Yeah, okay, well then if that's your thing and that's how you want to roll, go for it for a little while and let's see how that works out for you. But it's going to affect the body. Come on, it's going to affect the body. It affects the body. And you know what? You know what else it affects? It affects your family. It affects your family. It affects your job. It affects everything around you. So unity is important. <laughs> God's love in us. Man, I went off more on that tonight, I mean, on the other thing than, than I wanted to talk about the love of God. But he does love us. So, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another faithfully as you see the day approaching. How many of us see the day approaching? Yes. Did Pastor just talk about that before we started? Yes. The day is approaching, y'all. He's coming back. And I know you're going to hear this out of our lips a lot because you can pick it up in prayer. Yes. You can sense it, that Jesus is coming soon. I remember when I was little and they would say that, and I was like, no, no, I don't want him to come until I get married. I remember crying about it. Did anybody else cry about it? I cried about it. I was like, I want, uh, I want, I want to get married. But he's coming soon, y'all. Uh, what's the movie where it shows them uh, Jesus coming back and uh, left behind? You know, I remember going to a camp and them showing that video. Did you remember, anybody remember that video? You need to go back and watch it. All you teenagers, that's your homework. It, you're not in youth tonight, but I, I'm going to tell you what to do. <laughs> you got to go watch Left Behind. Why? Because warning, urging, and encouraging one another. Instead of us acting like everybody else, 
We've got to act like our head's on straight, y'all, because it is. Because we see the day approaching. I'm going to church more. I'm getting around the things of God more. I'm reading my Bible more. I'm praying more. I'm looking to him more. Yeah, because he's coming. It says no man knows when he's coming, but you can see the times, and you know that there are t- there, there's signs of the times that are lined right up, just like Pastor said. It could be today, like you say, it could be tomorrow. But are things in order with you? Are things in order with you? Are things in order just on the outside for everybody to see? Or if we went and looked at your Instagram account or the other things, is it in order? Or do you have a separate life? Jesus knows. Warning, urging, and encouraging. Let's all stand up tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.